injection techniques. And there's two ways of doing the injection. There's a hot needle injection, which is called thermospray, or the traditional cold needle injection. A hot needle injection works by inserting the needle into the inlet. The needle is then held inside the inlet and the needle heats up. Once the needle is heated up, typically it's going to take two to three seconds, the injection is made. And immediately as it comes out the needle, you're going to get a fine aerosol created. And this will immediately turn into a vapor cloud. This vapor cloud will then pass onto your separation column and it allows the separation to begin. So what are the advantages of this? You're going to get a complete transfer of your sample. It's very soft, so um, it's good for really volatile compounds and also thermally labile compounds because there's no contact with the inlet walls. There are some drawbacks. The needle volume is only going to hold on a standard needle 0.6 microliters. So if you're doing a one microliter injection, only 0.6 of it's being heated up immediately and the other 0.4 is being heated up as it passes through the needle. You do need a low boiling point solvent and there can be some form of distillation happening in the needle where really volatile things will start moving out the needle as it heats up and this can give some discrimination and sensitivity. The more traditional cold needle injection, the needle is introduced to the inlet and almost immediately the injection takes place and what you get is a fine spray of a liquid going into your inlet. Typically you'll have some glass wall at the bottom of your liner to stop this uh, liquid going to the bottom and then a vapor cloud will form. The vapor cloud will form by the evaporation from the glass wall and then this vapor will then pass through into your GC inlet and onto your separation column. So advantages of this, you've got a wide choice of solvents. The solvent doesn't need to be highly volatile to start off with. You're going to get a homogeneous evaporation. So this will result in really good reproducibility based on the volume and vaporization. It's very robust and it's adapted for highly concentrated samples, especially if you're using high split flows and split analysis. Some drawbacks. To get it really precise, you want to do a really fast injection to make sure that there's a fine spray of liquid going into the inlet. You also have the possible reaction of some of your compounds on the wall. You, you do kind of typically require a packed liner so that it has some more. And generally you need to do this at a slightly higher temperature to aid the evaporation.